people ask me, where does a person from Hawaii with Asian roots um, get a love for that part of the world? And um, it was from dance. I, uh, a big hobby of mine was dance. And when I came to Seattle for graduate work in the 60s, Seattle was a hotbed of folk dance, and so I got involved in folk dance. And folk dance meant dances from many countries, but the big favorite were the dances from the Balkans, the Greek, the Bulgarian, the Macedonian, the Croatian, the Serbian dances. So I joined a group called Kolada. This was in 1968, and we traveled, actually, in the Balkans to learn uh, Balkan dance and we lived with villagers and we went to festivals and this was in the summer of 68 and also in the summer of 70. So I really got into the culture. I was interested in learning some of the language and professionally I'm trained as a advisor and counselor in a community college and I also do ESL teaching. So that was my job but this was my avocation and my passion and um, doing dance and learning about the culture. So that's where that came from. And I felt in the former Yugoslavia, this was in the days of Tito, there was a warmth, and there still is a warmth and a passion of the people that I just really connected to. And for me, it's very similar to Hawaii. A lot of hospitality, warmth, and strength of family. So. It resonated with me. Um, at that time, I wasn't really walking strongly with the Lord. I wasn't going to church, uh, but the Lord got my attention in 1980, uh, and I was already in my 30s. I came back to the Lord, and I started going to church again. I started going to University Presbyterian Church in Seattle. I was in Seattle because I was doing graduate work. And then what happened was I heard about the war in Bosnia and my heart broke. Because I knew, you know, had a feeling for the people there. And then at, at our church, a Balkan task force was started. This was in 1996. I also volunteered to go to Croatia on a two week mission to serve at the Life Center. And this was um, bring, they were serving Bosnian refugees on the coast, giving them a free vacation. Anyway, that was my introduction, was in 19, 1996. And after that, I was a member of the task force at our church. And what we do is we meet monthly, we pray for the people of the region, we pray for God's work in the region. We send teams. We educate ourselves on what is going there, on there. We help to, we have fundraisers and we try to support different work. And one of our priorities, our, one of our top priorities is reconciliation because we know how important it is um, and that can only be done with God's grace. So a Christian movement that is doing reconciliation in the Bal Balkans is what we are behind. And that's how we connected with the ROM ministry, Renewing Our Minds. In fact, when the ministry was first started in 99, Vesna Vuletic, from the Life Center came and visited Seattle and she stayed in our home. And so from the very beginnings, we were very interested in, and involved in the ROM ministry as well as other ministries. We um, helped support internships of young Christian leaders in Serbia through InterVarsity. We, do, uh, we have done some humanitarian aid projects like winter helps in Sarajevo through the Sarajevo Baptist Church. So various things, and I have led women's teams to help encourage and disciple women in, in that region. 
So um, I'm, we're just definitely involved. And now that I am retired, I have much more time to spend on this uh, area. It's a ministry for the future. It ministers to young people. Uh, there's uh, a lack of hope for young people. It gives hope. But the most important thing is it centers around the person of Jesus without being hard hitting. It's an example. And we know people who have come to the Lord. We know people that have deepened in their, in their faith, uh, in their walk. We know people that are now asking questions. Uh, and these are people that are going to be the future leaders of their country. And we, and we have gotten to know individually some of the young people um, who have visited us and we have been involved uh, with them through many avenues. So I think that that's, the key for me is that it keeps being centered, Christ-centered, uh, in a real way not just using the name, not artif just artificially, uh, artificial religiosity. It's actually asking the questions, allowing people to ask the questions. And it's um, the heart of the gospel, which people see in the people that are running and organizing the ministry. So that's the reason why we are so behind it. I'm very excited about the possibilities of ROM expanding to other parts of the world. In a small way, the Balkan Task Force has had a part to play in this, in the, in the furthering of, of ROM. Also, what is exciting is what's happening at our church and what has happened in our church. What, we're do, what we have done is sent teams, university teams, to the Balkans as well as other parts of the world. But, there have been teams that have gone to Bosnia, there have been teams that have gone to Serbia, and also to Rom, to help with Rom in, in Croatia. And some of these people have become short-term missionaries in the region, but also active in the task force. And I see that as um, a healthy uh, involvement of the church, and I, and I see future involvement and interest uh, so I'm excited by that, and um, hopefully this will reach out into other congregations as well. We support indigenous ministries. This is an indigenous program. We have a lot of American support, but, but it, it was started in the Balkans. It, it is led by people from there, and that is so important for us.